there was an opportunity here to really give us an energy policy with security that we need for our nation. It pays down the deficit for the first time, $300 billion towards deficit, energy security and climate. People say, why didn't you wait for the inflation figures? Because I know I'm not adding to inflation. I'm not adding. Now, deficit reduction is surely a good thing. After all, presidents of both parties have pumped up the federal debt massively in the last few years. And it's true that the deficit reduction does help to curb inflation. But this is a very, very strange time to be raising taxes. The economy is contracting and companies are facing huge cost pressures with inflation at a 40-year high. All this, by the way, happened just hours after the Senate had passed a bill to support for, for significant financial support for the semiconductor industry. But only after Republicans said they would back it only if there were no new attempts at a major spending package. It looks like they got double-crossed. And now American companies and ultimately American consumers are going to pay the price. So let's take this up with our guests. Tommy, uh, do you like this massive new, well, not quite, it's, it's a slimmer version of Build Back Better. Do you think it's really going to do anything to reduce inflation? The Democrats are always good at moving the goalposts so that we say things like a slimmed down version of the asinine thing that they wanted the last time. So this is a little bit better. So as conservatives should just go along with it. No, absolutely not. As you said, you don't have a tax and spend bill when you're in this kind of situation, when you're going into a recession, whether they want to call it that or not. You don't raise taxes. All you're going to do is stifle innovation, entrepreneurship. The American people are already struggling. You don't want to do anything to mess with people investing in our economy, investing in new innovation. So no, this is not going to be a solution and you don't spend billions of dollars on climate change and trying to get people on electric vehicles when people are worried about putting food on their table pushing this woke agenda on people that are struggling in a country that is struggling absolutely the wrong time to do it maybe when you had donald trump in office and things were going well maybe then you focus on tree hugging not right now jessica if that last one was build back better what's this build back worse build back smaller skinny i always like when they say the skinny bill um I don't really see the problem here. This is actually what Republicans were asking for. And Joe Manchin was a hero, by the way. I mean, I've been on panels for the last few months, and every Republican, I love Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin <laughs> sticks to his principles. He represents the people of West Virginia. Yep. This is a what Democrats should be, right? The return of the blue dog Democrat. This is what the blue dog Democrat came up with, in conjunction, by the way, with Larry Summers, who was the one who told Joe Biden this, the American Rescue Act, it's too big. And we heard recently Janet Yellen admitted that she told Biden as well. She thought it was about double the size that it should have been. So there's targeted investment in climate for sure to make sure that we are transitioning away from fossil fuels. But those taxes raised, you can say the economy is contracting, but there have been record profits for corporations in certain sectors. We just got the numbers about the oil and gas companies. They can afford to pay more. People forget that there were presidents like Bill Clinton, for instance, that Republicans also really enjoyed what was going on in the 90s, had a much higher corporate tax rate than we do now. And that's Joe Manchin's point. They can't afford to pay more. Tommy, uh, targeted investment or green boondoggles? Well, listen, we need to have American manufacturing, whether you're talking about the chips bill or whatever, but you can't have American manufacturing if you don't have, first of all, American energy. And we can't rely on wind and solar to power American manufacturing. Manufacturing, We need actual reliable sources, and that's fossil fuels. So you don't attack that industry if you're looking to build back better, truly build back better, better American-made. That's not what you do. Climate change is, is a noble goal. We want to make sure that we're preserving our economy. We want to be good conservatives, and, and that I am. But you don't do it when we're in this position, and I don't think the American people are going to buy it when they're struggling at the grocery store and the gas. Uh, Jessica, you're right. I mean, Joe Manchin is no longer every, every Republican's favorite. It Democrat, happened overnight. They did get played, didn't they? Republicans got in the Senate really got played here. It's I I, I think that this is far less malicious than it seems. I think that Joe Manchin actually has been consistent in his commentary, which is to say, I will support a bill that I feel does no harm. Yeah, but it was and kind now, of sneaky, wasn't it, to do it hours, <coughs> excuse me, hours after they, sure. after they but, got through the semiconductor. And I thought it was honestly bank. pretty pathetic that, what was it, 24, 27 Republicans uh, changed their vote after Kevin McCarthy whipped against it. Mm. That is an investment in America. That's what conservatives are talking about all the time. So then to turn your back on the chips bill, thank God it still got through, but... Okay,